everybody, Sven Diesel here. We're going to be tying up the dub brush bow. Uh, this video goes in conjunction with the uh, dub brush I made on the uh, Cyclone. I'll put a link uh, to it, but uh, we got a size uh, 4 here in the hook, or in the vise. We're going to be using some wax thread in white. This is an 8-aught. You could go heavier with like a 6-aught or a, a 50 denier or... or something a little heavier like a 3 odd, if you'd like but uh, we're using utilizing a brush here which is a stainless steel uh, brush and so let's go ahead and get our tail on we're using a fly skins thin fins this is a size medium I'm just going to go ahead and um, tie in the uh, tab here at the very end of the uh, shank of this hook as it goes into the bend and I'll get about five wraps and then really crank down and secure making sure not to go too far to bend that tail but I really like that length and that's how it's designed to go in so let's just secure it once more and we're going to get out a little bit of our super glue this is Zappa Gap I like it because it comes in a brush and so all you do is unscrew the lid dab a little bit of brush or a little bit of glue on there make sure to get some on the thin fins and that will just bond it and make sure it's a little heavier um, because we are going to be securing in our dub brush now this is a craft fur uh, brush it's white um, of extra select craft fur so it's a little bit longer and we've got in some ripple ice and we're just going to go ahead and tie in the end that was uh, at the hook of the uh, dub brush uh, cyclone and we'll tie it in and because we got a little bit of extra glue you gotta be a little bit of careful when you're palmering this around making sure not to let fibers trap down on that uh, shank uh, the best you can but I'm not going to be doing touching wraps. That glue is going to hold it in place. I'm just making sure to do really tight um, wraps and use a lot of pressure as I go down on the other side. I want to make sure that it's a little bit sparse here towards the back where it's going to taper into the tail. And so you were going to use about, I'd say, not quite half of this brush, but we're going to use um, a good at least three-eighths of the brush. As we get up towards the eye, we're going to go ahead and just bring it over and then try not to trap so many fibers, but go ahead and tie that off with a behind wrap. Do a bunch in front and then go over again. Then make sure, since it's a stainless steel uh, wire core that's double, I use my wire snips and just do a flush cut and then secure that um, down real nice and tight and making sure that you don't have any sharp wire up that could eventually maybe break the, the thread here but we'll whip finish a single uh, one whip finished and then I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of uh, a glue um, uh, sorry excuse me UV resin I'm going to just put a little bit of a, a glob here once I uh, brush this out um, you can do the UV resin before but I got my brush right here already so I'm going to be pretty aggressive on this uh, making sure to go back and forth get any of those trap fibers out and you can see how this has a nice little taper here it's going to be nice and flowy back into that tail and that is looking really good so you can see how easy it is to create this uh, back section we'll go ahead and resin this and something's going on with this bottle I just opened it but We'll go ahead and cure that. I got a drop or two on there and we'll just let it cure for five to ten seconds and we are ready to move on to the main body. This is uh, where I, I do dub brushes. It makes uh, life a lot easier at the vise. It takes a little time up front but now we're going to put a uh, size uh, 2 here and this is a Gamagatsu B10S and we just got it secured here in the vise and we're going to go ahead and start our thread and work our way down just a little bit because we are going to put some uh, large lead dumbbell eyes on. I want to get a little bit of weight on this, help get it down. Now we want these uh, this streamer to ride hook point down, and so I'm going to actually tie my um, lead eyes on the uh, bottom side of the shank. If you were going to attempt to have it ride point up, you would of course secure it on the other side. But we want this one riding hook point down. And so I'm going to do some figure eights on this and then some wrap arounds. It's uh, pretty easy once you get this started to, uh, if it's tilting the one way, you just wrap like I'm doing. Um, and then uh, it kind of pulls it the way you want it to go. 
and then I make sure to do a few wraps in front and a little bit more figure eight and then a few wraps behind and you could prep these in advance by tying a whole bunch of them on and letting them dry with some uh, super glue or uh, zap a gap as I'm using but I'm gonna wait because I'm going to just do one zap a gap session I guess is what I'll call it but I'm using some spider wire this is a, a 50 pound uh, camo braid um, I'm gonna do two sections so I cut about eight to nine inches and then I just fold it in half and I'm gonna cut uh, so I've got two equal strands and I'm going to go ahead and tie it in on the on the top of the shank of the hook but on my side and I'm going to leave about a half inch to three quarters of an inch out front uh, beyond the uh, the lead eyes and you'll find out why later and so I'll tie this in and I'll go all the way down a little bit into the bend of the hook and that's where we're going to secure our rear hook but we're going to put some spacer beads in these are just some uh, cheap beads I bought in an assortment they're pink uh, kind of going with the rainbow theme if they uh, if these shine through or you know the fish can see these through the white uh, craft fur brush and so I always struggle with beads on hooks and beads on these wires so we'll see how I do this is a larger bead I don't know the exact size but just I guess use the bead that uh, you like that doesn't look ridiculous so that's a good space I'm gonna do three and then I'll go ahead and go up through the eye of my rear hook and then we're going to work our way back through those beads again. Now you don't need to do two, especially with this 50 pound braid, but I kind of want it a little bit, I guess, stiffer. I think that two kind of restricts the movement just a little bit. Um, but at the same time, I'm just paranoid if I spend all this time um, uh, tying this fly, I don't want one of these to break and, uh, you know, or a fish to break off that rear hook and so I'm gonna go ahead and tie this in on the uh, top of the shank on the opposing side so that it's an even underbody and if you uh, didn't get the right uh, distance or if it's too loose just go ahead and pull it tight this time but I'm gonna wrap these uh, spider wire around my lead eyes on each side and then I'll go ahead and secure it and work my way back and that's why I didn't glue them at that point because now I'm just gonna glue everything together and if it was all super glued I would have had a problem uh, wrapping that around the lead eyes without getting super glue all over my hands so uh, we'll cut these uh, tag ends out <clears throat> and this is a point where you want to be a little bit more generous with your uh, zappa gap and I'll work my way back to our tying point and it's a little bit loose so I'm gonna do a couple more wraps down the bend that looks pretty good nice and flowy now the craft fur brush is, I put the ripple ice in there to stiffen it up a little bit so as I palmer this around on my first couple wraps it's going to keep the uh, the rear hook, uh, try to help aid it in not fouling. Uh, it's going to kind of restrict its movement to be back and that's why I like to use that uh, stiffer flash in this uh, craft fur brush. But we'll go ahead, we got plenty of glue on there. I'm going to tie in uh, right where I cut off, and we are good to go. Um, I want to palmer this all the way up, just, just behind the eyes, and then we're going to create a dubbing uh, head. And so just take your time. It's There's quite a bit of zappa gap on here, so you don't want to uh, mess that up or trap a ton of fibers. And I guess this brush I did a little bit sparse right through here, but it will still fish, and the fish will like it. It's really important that when you're doing your dub brushes to uh, try and get them as even as possible so that when you're at the vise right now for example I'm it's a little sparse right here and it's going to create a little, not as much profile as I was hoping for but we got plenty here uh, right in my fingers right now so we should be fine but I'm um, just grab this uh, dub brush by the end and just continue palmering it and making sure not to wrap over your previous wraps and trying to limit uh, trapping all these fibers in. As we get up here right behind the eyes I'm just going to do about one more wrap and then we'll go ahead and tie it off with some securing wraps behind and in front of it. So we got it there let's trap it let's do a couple wraps and then at this point we are good to snip out just this little bit of wire. See this is the perfect length for a double articulated uh, streamer. This uh, cyclone uh, dub brush table makes the perfect amount. I could get two smaller streamers out of it but 
Um, of course, I couldn't do much larger than this. So we uh, will brush this out. Of course, like you could do a thicker dub brush and use less material, less wraps, but I like to do mine thinner so that I have more control on the body when I'm tying. And so I'll just go ahead and brush this back, making sure to uh, check out how it's looking. It's looking pretty good. And I really like this. There we go. Watch out. Oh, I just got myself in the thumb. That hook point is just deadly. You gotta, if you haven't stabbed yourself, you, I don't know, you're maybe not going fast enough or you're amazingly lucky. But uh, when you do stab yourself, make sure you don't uh, get blood all over your white uh, material because blood does stain. And I don't know if the fish prefer a blood stained uh, game change or crapper uh, brush. And I got myself again. Man, I am really struggling with this. All right, let's get that in that material clip. There you go. I know guys that put a, a pencil erasers on that to help not do that, but I just keep tying. Now we're going to be using this is uh, One Eye Flies uh, Dubbin. Uh, this is uh, olive, uh, closest color he makes to what I want. I'm just going to pull out a little bit and stack it. Just pull it and twist it into a noodle and then pull it again and stack it on top of each other and I'm going to tie it in not quite at the halfway point I'm going to probably tie it in at the 3 8 um, on one side and 5 8 on the other I want to get a little bit longer of a of olive going down the back of this and then we're going to do a white underbelly and so since the lead eyes are going to be on the bottom and it's going to write hook point down we're going to do white now and you can turn your vise over it helps but if you're skilled you don't need to you can just Hold it up and tie it in. Same process. Pull a little clump of dubbing out. I'm going to go a little sparser than I did on top just because I don't want to get too much material that could potentially block that uh, hook point. And so once you get two securing wraps, just go ahead and uh, without um, pulling material, like for example, the olive over into the white and the white up into the olive, just hold them in place and build up a nice thread dam. And we, I, we're going to do a few more, but let's go ahead and secure these fibers so that what is going on with this loon bottle? It is a brand new one, and it seems to be uh, wanting to leak out the uh, wrong places. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and cure that up. The the uh, resin is just to make sure that when we brush this out, we're not uh, losing a bunch of fibers. Um, but you can see right there we are starting to build this nice profile up in the front of this and we'll probably do two more sections of tying in we'll do one kind of over the eyes and then one right in front on the actual eye almost so with our thread in front of the eye we'll go ahead and grab another clump of the uh, olive and we will um, maybe grab a little bit thinner than last time but at this time we are going to be tying it in at the 50 50 mark that way it folds back over and we're getting these fibers to not be as long but I'll do kind of a zigzag tie in here um, basically going over or under and making sure trying not to trap as many fibers and this kind of covers the, the eyes a little bit better and we'll do the same process but now instead of white I'm gonna move into a tan color and I'm gonna go really sparse on this one because I don't want too much going back into that white and I just want a little hint of tan and I'm going to do a second tie-in of tan and so I'll just zigzag this same tie-in point trying to keep all that olive on top in place and then as I come around the other side I'm going to go ahead and keep your tan on the on the bottom and the olive on the top I'll fold them back and then I'll build up a nice thread dam right in front of those kind of right up behind the eye trying to be just right in front of those uh, lead eyes and you can go as heavy as you want on this thread to keep that back but we're gonna I guess cheat a little bit and use um, some of the uh, UV resin and we'll go ahead and man this is looking good this is gonna be a nice profile so let's get some dabs of resin right there in those corners and this bottle is just leaking look at that oh, that's way too much um, if you ever do get some resin in the eye, just grab your bodkin or uh, something that would fit through the eye of the hook. Before you um, cure it up, you can always just poke it real fast 
um, to get that resin out and just rub it on your finger. Um, but hopefully that resin doesn't uh, clog your eye if so you can just pick it out. But <clears throat> we lucked out. I might have to take a look at this uh, bottle of uh, resin afterwards and maybe secure the tip a little bit better. But we are just uh, going to brush this out to see how we're doing on bulk and how it's looking. I'm liking it, so let's go with a little bit of a lighter green. And we'll go ahead and just go pretty sparse on this one. Um, probably the as thin as we did with the tan on the underbody. And we'll stack it like we did on the previous um, tie-in points except we're, we're going to do a 50-50 here and make sure that our thread is right almost on the eye. And we'll do the same on the other side. Flip it over if you can. If you can't, just hold it. But we're going to do a tan and about the same size um, uh, noodle or thickness of dubbing. And we'll just do the same tie-in point of 50-50. And we are ready to finish this off. So just split the fibers back and make sure your thread is just right on the, uh, the eye of the hook. And we will pull these fibers back, kind of separating them so that the eyes are your um, dividers. I want these flowing right on the eyes but not covering the eyes. And so now I got those all trapped back. Trapped, tra um, trapped back. I'm going to go ahead and uh, kind of fan this out just a little bit trying to cover up uh, and build a little bit of a wider head But that looks pretty good So let's go ahead and crank down and really build up a nice dam here to finish this fly And then you could color this any color you want. I'm just gonna leave it white But that looks good. <clears throat> this is gonna fish So let's do a whip finish. We're just gonna do a single whip finish because I'm gonna do um, uh, apply some resin to secure all those fibers in and that really just kind of holds everything together but as you uh, make sure you kind of keep that head a little bit clean we'll go ahead and snip out our thread and we are pretty much done but let's go ahead and throw some resin right in here in the cracks making sure just to not get as much in the material but uh, I got another glob man this is really it's a good thing that you guys are not as careless as me and you check your uh, your flow, but I'm going to double check that this didn't get any resin in it. And we'll go ahead and cure that up. You can see I just did what I told you about. I just put a little bobkin in and uh, made sure it was resin free and then cured it up. Because once you cure it, it's a little bit more difficult. you got to kind of chip it out. And let's secure it on the bottom again. I bet you I'm going to get a yep big glob. This is, I'm going to brush it onto my hands. This is not cooperating for a, a video, but hey, when you're tying flies, it's not always perfect. So, I'm going to see if I can get this. There we go. I think I've got it now. So, I cranked down the, the red tube into the bottle. And, nope, I didn't. Oh, well. Let's just put that resin on. And I will use my bodkin to fix it so I'm gonna run that bobkin through a couple times wipe it off on my t-shirt or on your finger just so you get all the resin off and then cure it up and that looks darn sexy so sorry about all that resin issue but uh, we have a really nice looking articulated fly we used a dub brush so the body material is really secure we secured in all the dubbing for the head with uh, resin we should be money. This is golden. It's going to catch lots of fish. It's going to be fun to cast. It's going to sink down. Now, there is one final step that I like to do, and that's this tail. Now, this tail is really awesome, but when it's wet, it can kind of flop around. So what I do is I just kind of brush those fibers back. I take a little bit of liquid fusion. I just pour a little bit of a, a glob on here. And it's okay if you get it on your fingers and then I just use my fingers and kind of crease up and down this and I'll let it um, basically hang dry and this just stiffens it up a little bit I don't have any glue right by the hook so it still moves around and I just bend a paper clip to uh, kind of hold this hook eye and I just let it hang just like that for an hour or two it should be dry 
and there you go so this is a fun pattern you can switch up the color combinations make any dub brush you want makes it a little bit easier um, you know less time at the vise but uh, way more secure in my opinion and durable thanks for watching